Okay, so I thought I'd do a quick recording just explaining how the Foxes reporting works and why some people may see values such as you know, the battery is not full, uh, trying to charge, but they're exporting to the grid, or maybe they've got a full battery, uh, lots of solar production, but they're still seeing some grid consumption. So I thought I'd show you just a mixture of the Foxys cloud uh, dashboard. This is just the desktop version of the the, fo the phone app. It's exactly the same uh, properties. It's just a little bit easier to share and, and explain. Uh, I'm also using Home Assistant uh, just to show what the real, the true real time data looks like. So you'll see a, uh, a comparison of why the Foxys app isn't necessarily the best source of information if you're trying to understand your uh, your production your solar values in real time okay so right now we're looking at the foxes cloud dashboard i've got a couple of things going on so i'll just quickly explain by drawing on the screen uh, what's going on so over here is the solar production i'm just shy of two kilowatts of solar production over here i also have a second solar inverter uh, could be any brand mine is is also Foxus, but you can use a second CT clamp to track a second solar inverter as well. So I've got uh, two kilowatts over here, one kilowatt over here. Um, the hybrid inverter is currently not doing anything because my um, my my house load is low enough that the inverter uh, second inverter is able to power the house loads, and then any surplus is actually going into the battery which is over here um, and my grid consumption right now uh, is just what's that 20 watts so uh, that's that's over here you can see how the how the, the energy flow graph looks with the with the arrows all going this way um, etc just following the animation now what you need to understand about the foxes or the way that foxes reports data which is not uncommon uh, it is this way for, for many uh, solar inverter brands, is that it is sending a packet of data every few minutes, and depending on what your inverter is configured to. By default, it is every five minutes, and some folks have reduced their uh, poll level to you know, 60 seconds or 120 seconds, two minutes. Uh, but you are only getting a pulse of data that includes the current values for the properties that I've circled here, and also you get a total, uh, you get a total sort of meter value. So that that way it can calculate the difference in generation in order to uh, create some of these statistics that you see along the top. So it's not relying just on the, it's not relying on the, the values that are live. It is also sending meter information, i.e., uh, cumulative totals of of how many kilowatts of of solar of consumption of grid use so even though it's only updating every five minutes it's not missing four minutes of information it's they're being accumulative and, and they're, they're counting up so they're being taken into account for what this means though is if your solar inverter is only pushing updates every five minutes and you look at this data you're looking at technically incorrect information representative to to what's going on right now so right now it believes in this latest update that i've got uh i'm charging the batteries at two uh two kilowatts and i've got a uh 790 watt load coming from the house etc and that my second inverter is generating just over one over here so that's what the data packet sent five minutes ago if we continue to wait you'll see all of these values update in a couple moments and and what will happen is these values will then be another snapshot so treat this as freeze frame snapshot data like you're taking a picture of something with an old kodak camera it's what the situation was at that moment that the data snapshot was taken and then sent to the cloud a second later it's already wrong and that's the problem is because the way the inverter works is that it's constantly responding to the demands from the solar, from the house, from the batteries. It's mixing all these sources together um, 
and you can't really see that in the app and that's where you get into situations where it looks like you're using grid when you've got solar and it looks like when your batteries need charging your your feeding power into the grid and i'll show you what that looks like now so i just get rid of my pencil drawings and jump over to a simple dashboard that i've made in home assistant this is using the modbus integration um, and that's available. Chris made it. It's available as a community project on GitHub. You um, do need an extra piece of hardware, but that's for a, a, another video. This data is coming directly out of the inverter through a small box that I've got mounted just underneath the inverter that connects with two cables into my, my Fox inverter. Um, I've got quite a complicated setup with multiple inverters, multiple battery packs, but I'll try and um, I'll try and point out some of the, the specific values that are important to help you understand what's going on with uh, when it comes to response time, etc. So right now, this is live. You can see, let's just get my pencil back. So you can see right now, my system believes it's using zero watts. Oh, it's got up to eight watts. So this is a live grid use value, and now it's 21 watts. Just to reiterate, and I've spoken about this on, on other videos, the way that all solar, hybrid uh, grid-tied solar inverters work is that they have a little white CT clamp around the, uh, the incoming power cables. And because it's a floating point system, it will be constantly pushing a tiny bit of voltage pressure back onto the grid, which means that in order for your hybrid inverter to understand what your house is using and what is coming from and to the grid, it, it has to use a little bit of power. So it's not un uncommon to see anywhere from 20 to 40 watts of concurrent sustained power use. You're drawing from the grid, 40 watts, the equivalent to probably a light bulb. And it's using that to figure out and balance your house against the grid. Now, the only time you'll not have that slight use is when you are exporting, if you're feeding into the grid, it, you'll have a constant flow of energy leaving your house, so you will be consuming no power. But you can see here, mine's jumping anywhere between 5 watts and 31 watts. Um, if you catch a glance at this in the Foxus app, it will probably say something like 0 0.03 or 0 0.04. That's absolutely normal, 0 0.02. That is just a little bit of, of, of power coming in, very few watts, just to allow the hybrid system to do the grid balancing that's completely normal so that's what that value is if i look over here at my real-time energy flow i've currently got a combined two kilowatt and that's bouncing around a little bit as the clouds go over here's my house draw and here's my battery charge state i'm currently putting in 1.1 uh, 1 1.2 kilowatts into the batteries and i've got no feed in or export going on over here uh you can see here that this value for the battery charging is actually over here as well. You can see that my solar value here is also over here. Uh, my battery state of charge is down here. So I've got two battery packs, 16 batteries, two sets of eight, and that's showing the, um, the battery level. And I've broken down my solar arrays uh, by, by part of the house or roof that, that they're using. So that's what's going on here. So we're now kind of synchronized on what my values in Home Assistant look like compared to the Fox values. So you can see, right, so at the moment it still thinks my load is 0 0.79, but actually my load is 0 0.9. So that's, that's an old piece of information. It thinks that my solar generation is 1.9. If we add these two together, actually this is, this is same closer to three if you add these two together so this is again is wrong information it says i'm using grid when if i look over here i am but well now i'm not so you can see how the foxus system is reporting accurate information but it's just snapshot information it's going to be a sec it's at the moment it's a second old it's 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 expired it's just a a glance into the past and you're only getting one picture it'd be like watching a film if the film only updated once every five minutes you wouldn't be able to make make much sense of what the film was about so that's that's what's going on here now i can fill in the gaps using real-time data directly off the inverter and let me show you something interesting if i put a high load 
on my my home i'm going to turn on a three kilowatt water heater watch what happens to the grid and watch what happens to the feed in and the battery values here let me just bring my pencil back right so the water heater is on Let's see what happens okay so we've now we're now taking from the battery the grid didn't jump quite as much as what I'd expect of it to. Sometimes you'll see several kilowatts jump immediately on the grid and then become balanced by the battery because the battery does take a small, it takes some time to respond. So now we'll try turning the uh, water heater off and we're going to watch in particular the feed in amount here. So water heater's off. See the feed in jumps up. And now the battery's responding, the grid has gone wild. This is the problem with any battery connected hybrid inverter that's grid tied is I'll add the load again, water heater's on, battery's responding. Got a bit of feeding going on right now. And now it's, now it's balanced out. And I'm gonna turn the water heater back off. And now suddenly the feed in has shot up to nearly three kilowatts, the grid is, overcompensating and it all stabilizes again you notice the battery goes back to charging again off so plus power now if a load such as an oven a kettle an electric hob if any load is turning on and off it's particularly bad with hobs ovens and uh, and kettles what's going to happen is as that element turns on and then turns off especially if it's an oven or a hob you're going to see those blips you're going to see suddenly grid usage and then you're going to see grid feed in or vice versa feed in then grid usage if that if that snapshot from the fox app is taken at the moment that you that that transition is happening in load while the battery and the inverter are trying to stabilize the load if the snapshot happens you're looking at an app for five minutes potentially that looks like you're either consuming grid or exporting from your home and that and that's the problem is it's giving you a false representation of, of what of what's actually happening your inverter is working fine your inverter is constantly fighting to try and balance this grid value with the available resources such as battery and solar so it's trying to keep it as close to zero as possible or as close to 20 or 30 watts as possible depending on your exact situation but it's those those uh, demands of power, the sudden demands of power that are causing these values to fluctuate only for a moment. So I'll do it again. Water heater on. Nope, oh, there you see the grid is immediately jumping up and now it's reducing. And now I'm using my, my battery level. And then if I turn it off, the feed in shoots up. Now the grid shoots up and then it all starts to stabilize again. So that is the problem. It's all working fine. But if you are taking a picture of the situation, whilst any of that is going on, you'll spend five minutes looking at the app, scratching your head, trying to figure out, is my inverter working properly? So that's the, the net net. I know this is a long way about explaining it, but, but I thought it was important you understand how the Fox app is technically correct, showing you the right information. It's showing you the snapshot information on this power, on this power graph. But know that the Fox app is also reporting the total cumulative values of each of these data sources. So your reporting, your your daily totals, etc., will all be fine. It's just the sort of real time view that can bit, get a bit confusing. And if you're interested in setting up something similar to this, I've got a few videos. Check out my channel. I've got a few videos on how to set up Home Assistant, either with the cloud integration or with the direct Modbus integration uh that that gives you these these real-time values so um you can see this yourself if you stood in front of your inverter and turned a kettle on you'd see the same problem um it's it's just it's just response time of the inverter response time on the battery and how it works with that grid tied ct any questions feel free to comment thank you bye for now